How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry. I unfortunately had to end the last episode off in the middle of context. So to kind of recap as to what exactly is going on, uh, Keiichi thought it would be a great idea to arm himself with a bat. So we found a bat in a locker thinking, oh yeah, nobody, nobody will mind us stealing it. And uh, yeah, that bat used to belong to Satoshi, who quote-unquote transferred out, but also may have gotten demoned away or whatever. Basically, Satoshi might be dead, but I don't think Keiichi has really come to that conclusion. I feel like I can already come to that conclusion based on everything that's been thrown around and whatever else is going on. But anyways, we're kind of, we're trying to get information out of Rena right now. Rena was trying to be apologetic to us, and we were kind of being mean to her. And I guess I kind of get it, you know, Keiichi is kind of sick and tired of all this shit. Anyways, let's, uh, let's see what we can get here. Rena knew. She knew what became of Satoshi. No, forget about what happened to a guy in the past. Excuse me, Rena knew what was going to happen to me. With that, I grabbed Rena's shoulder violently and forcibly turned her around to face me. Oh no. As I faced her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. I, I think I know why. Yeah. 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 It was that person that I didn't know. At least it definitely wasn't the Rena Ryugu I'd been talking to up until now. The voice just now didn't have a trace of the trembling or emotion that it had before. The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carelessly was unsurpassed. And that gaze that pierced like a cold needle, the smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out by a knife. Chills went down my spine, my mind froze under a layer of rhyme. Both Rena's eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. As if to remind me of the fear from that time before, Rena brought her face close to mine, so close that I could feel her breath. Her face had filled my entire field of vision. Then her sharply shaped lips grew even sharper, like the curves of a crescent moon. She grinned. After a short pause, Rena repeated the same words again. Yeah, I'm 100% I'm sure that's exactly what happened here. Transferred meaning what? What Rena meant must have been the new definition of transfer that I was <laughs> previously not aware of. Yeah, I, I guess transferred in this case may be transferring from the world of the living to the world of death. And my throat and lips dried up. I couldn't even acknowledge what I had just heard. All I could do was swallow down my own saliva. It would seem that Rena saw that as, I, as a nod, excuse me. She pulled her gaze back, and spryly stepped back two, three paces. As she did, my legs gave out, and I fell to my knees pathetically. Why does that always happen when she gets so close to us with those terrible eyes? Rena and me on my knees underneath my emotionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight, indeed. Seeing me in that pathetic state, she neither scoffed at me nor held out her hand. But I could neither stand nor escape with her gaze shooting through my eyes. There was undoubtedly a metal bat in my hand, but right now it was useless to me. It was a, it was like a, or I was like a fly caught in her web, excuse me. Heavy sweat beaded all over my body. I could feel it dripping from my skin. I hope not. I really hope not. Rena finally released me from that cage of time after what felt like an eternity. But her question was missing something important and was incredibly vague. Once again, I swallowed hard, urging her on. Transfer out. What did she not want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the end of the chat. Damn, I hate it. I hate it when that happens, you know? Just... You never know when the end of those little, you know, chapters are where you can, you know, cut off an episode. We did get an achievement there, but it looks like we didn't unlock any tips. 
Satoshi and I had what? All my well-planned actions throughout the day turned out to have been nothing more than a reenactment of what Satoshi had done. Satoshi... Had he really been in the same situation as I was now? The friends he had gotten along with had changed suddenly and for no reason, at least none that I had noticed, planned to kill him? Then fearing for his life as I am... Excuse me. He got a bat to protect himself and carried it around every day to practice his swing? And then one day, suddenly, he transferred. Huge ass quotes there. <laughs> my blood went cold, causing a prickling sensation to course through my veins. Starting near my heart, it radiated outwards from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, chilling every part of me without recourse. What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Was Satoshi still at wherever he transferred to? Was he the only one who would be able to understand me? Would he be able to tell me why it all ended up like this? More importantly, where did he transfer to? To the depths of hell? What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? I'm pretty sure I have an idea here. I think all of us can kind of understand where Satoshi is now. He's not with us anymore. He's gone to greater places, new heights. Before I knew it, I was at my front door. The frigid knob was hard to turn. Was nobody home? It wasn't that odd of an occurrence. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the single key attached to my first seal keychain. I forgot we had that. I stepped into the entryway. Just as I was about to take off my shoes, a chill ran down my spine. Someone had entered right behind me. How are we not noticing a person that was behind us up until now? It's like, all right, I'm totally not giving a shit as to what's going on around me. Opens door, enters house. Wait a minute. Like a classmate messing around, standing right up against my back. You're kidding, right? It had to be my imagination. Wait a minute, this is the same guy that was able to detect somebody following him? Like, in the last episode. The end of the last episode. That's that's how we met up with Rena there. That's where this context is. She was following us, and he was able to, you know, detect that. But he wasn't able to detect this until we got inside? Was he that freaked out? Logically speaking, it was impossible for someone to be able to hide their presence within my personal space all the way through the door. But there was undoubtedly someone behind me. Hey now, hey now, Keiichi. How do you know they're there even though they're behind you? Because I could hear the sound of flowing hair. There's no other reason I'd hear that sound. And that was the presence. Because I could hear the sound of them blinking. Keiichi, my bro, there's no way you could hear that. My most base instincts were warning me of the presence. Common sense was telling me, that it was just my imagination. It was just my imagination. There's nobody behind me. I began to erase the mental image of an eerie figure standing behind me. But at the same time, I asked myself, if there was nobody, then what was I feeling? An uncomfortable sensation crawled up my spine. Actually, wouldn't it be better if there was somebody there? If there was nobody there when you turned around, would you be able to accept that? I'd be able to answer all those questions just by looking behind me. But I didn't have enough courage to even do that simple task. Then we're going to be forever stuck in fear. We have to turn around. Oh right, I could try speaking to them. The person behind me might answer me. It was a random thought. I didn't care how I went about it, just so long as I didn't have to turn around. If I had calmed down and thought about it, I would have known that that wouldn't, that wouldn't have solved anything. <gasps> Oh, but we're gonna speak anyways. I spoke in such a hoarse, broken voice that I couldn't believe it was my own. I can almost feel them contemplating their response. I felt it. There's no way I should be able to do that. Calm down, KG. It's all in your head. Well, is it? Is there somebody here with us? That time, I was certain I heard it. As I hesitantly, or as if hesitantly trying to answer my inquiry, I was certain... I could hear the sound of someone inhaling. I heard it. I heard it. 
I heard it clearly. It was a girl. Well, we only know, like... <laughs> we only really know females here. A young girl. I didn't know who, but... A tiny speck of courage in me, however reckless it was, inspired a primal yet fitting solution to this current predicament. A scream. All the force in my body released from my lungs and through my throat, ceasing all thought processes in my head. Suppressing all my thoughts and emotions, I began to collapse like a house of cards, somehow managing to twist my body and look back as I did so. And... It was definitely there. Right there. Why are we referring to this person as an it? Somebody was there. Until the moment I turned around, until I brought the area behind me into my field of vision, they were definitely there. Falling face up, my eyes traced the remnants of the presence suspended in the empty space. It couldn't be. They were invisible. They looked like they weren't there, but they actually... But were they actually still standing? What the fuck's happening? As I screamed, all the emotions I was holding back burst free in a violent wave. However, I was decidedly calm as my emotional dam collapsed. The turbulent wave of pent-up emotions was skillfully diverted into a torrent of aggression. That emotion was definitely required to extricate myself from the bizarre situation happening right in front of me. In my state of heightened lucidity, I entrusted my body to the fury. The metal bat held firm in my right hand as if drawn there by a magnet. A mid-level sweep would be the hardest attack to dodge. I remembered reading something like that from a book about swordsmanship or something. I brandished my will to fight. The after image of that, I don't even know what the fuck that word is, amalgation? Let's go with that. Of metal flashed as if, or as it swung from left to right, beating against the entryway. The bat slammed right into the wall, the tip rebounding violently. Very calmly, I transferred the force of the rebound into a sweep to the left. The door of the shoe cupboard was split into pieces. Those two swings whiffed through empty space, but they seemed to have a great psychological impact on the enemy. I could feel the panic emanating from that space. The attack wasn't the only thing required. I extricated the bat from the cupboard it was embedded in and screamed as I spun my entire body around in a large arc. Are we just losing our mind now? Is, is that the deal going on here? My scream shook the air, imbuing my ferocious swing with even more destructive power. <clears throat> Crack. Without mercy or restraint, my violent strike with certainly, or certainly fatal force behind it shattered the top of the cupboard. None of my attacks struck the enemy, but my ferocity had certainly seemed to impact them. Breathing heavily, my entire body soaked in sweat, the invisible enemy, there but not there, dispersed. Dispersed how? Just, just gone? What the fuck was that? When I was certain that the enemy had retreated, I locked the front door and latched the chain. No way. Had it only feigned retreat and was now inside my house? Once again, I channeled my aggression and searched the house for the presence. But it was gone. I had succeeded in fending it off. At that moment, the tension drained from my body and I let out a deep sigh of relief. All of the emotions I'd been holding back chaotically merged together and began to flood out. A hodgepodge of fear, accomplishment, and disbelief all mixed together and began to flow through my body. Unable to deal with each individual feeling, I beat them all back with the strongest. Exhaustion. Even in this moment, I remained composed. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely composure that we're witnessing here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. After checking that all the doors throughout the house were locked, I went up to my room on the second floor and closed the curtains. I straightened my back and tilted my head back a little. After clearing my mind of all my idle thoughts, I managed to calm down even more. What was that at the front door? There was definitely something there. Thinking about it, maybe it was just an apparition I dreamt up in my confused state, but I really didn't think that was the case. Calm down, Keichi Maibara. Compose yourself. But no matter how calmly I thought about it, 
what just happened wasn't a figment of my imagination. It was obviously a supernatural phenomenon, and without a doubt, something was behind me. It wasn't some sort of illusion I saw amidst my confusion and disorientation. Proof? I had just one piece. When I asked who it is, or who is it, they inhaled as if they were about to answer. That sound had clearly reached my ears. The situation I was in right now was still unclear. Either I had been possessed by the supernatural phenomenon known as Oyashiro Sama's curse, or this was a ruse by the villagers who believed in it and were imitating it. Either way, their motives were unclear. The roundabout way it had been done was also still a mystery. If, if it was perpetrated by humans, that would mean admitting it, or admitting that it was Rena and the rest of them doing it, but it would be solvable. Uishi's son and the rest of the police would surely arrest my enemy. But if it was a manifestation of Uyashiro Sama's curse, I wondered what would happen. Uishi's son very clearly declared that curses didn't exist. At that time, those words were pretty dependable, as if things were now, or but as things were now, with the rising possibility that the perpetrators were not human, he suddenly seemed quite unreliable. If I told Uishi-san this was the work of Yashiro samas curse, what would happen? I couldn't imagine his reaction, but it would go without question that a void would expand rapidly between myself and Uishi-san. With me having so few allies to begin with and not being able to confidently declare whether or not this was a curse, there was no merit to doing that. I'd better keep the facts of what just happened at the doorway to myself. It would be better if I didn't add what happened there to the memo behind the clock. There was still the ever so slight possibility that I was actually confused when I thought I was composed and I was just going berserk in the entryway. How wonderful would that be if that was really what happened? I would be able to refute Oyashiro Sama's curse. But if I denied Oyashiro Sama's curse, then that would mean admitting that Rena and the rest were the perpetrators. If I said that Rena and the rest weren't the perpetrators, then that would mean believing in Oyo Oyashiro Sama's curse. Sorry, his, his name is just a. It's a struggle. By denying both of those, I would be admitting that I myself was losing it. The three options from which I couldn't choose became a trilemma of sorts. They mixed together and formed a whirlpool in my mind, making my head spin. Once again, I straightened myself and leaned my head back slightly to cool myself down. Calm down, Keiichi. Accept what has, has, accept what has actually happened as reality, sorry. Stop thinking of anything more than that. But I couldn't help but think of it. How wonderful it would be if it turned out I was delirious and everything up until now was a figment of my imagination. Oyashiro Sama's curse wouldn't exist and I would still be best as buddies with Rena and the rest. I would have to be crazy. That was the first time in my life I'd ever wished for such a thing. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to state here that I actually do think that that was just KG Oh fuck. The phone rang noisily downstairs. I guess we got to go pick that up. Generally there were no calls for me, so I never really answered the phone much. But since my parents weren't here, I had no choice. I squirmed off the bed and went downstairs. Okay, once he answers the phone, I'll, uh... Okay, I was gonna say, I honestly think that Keiichi is kind of losing it, because, you know, our, our human minds are just oh so terrible. And here and there, we imagine things that actually aren't there. An episode or two ago, maybe in the last episode, I can't remember now, I was talking about how, you know, uh, after that whole... Rena kind of peeking in on Keiichi deal with the phone and and then he was like having to get up multiple times at night to check and make sure nobody was there. I told a story about how I thought somebody was standing outside my doorway at my old house in the room I used to stay in there. So the human mind just loves to make things up and mess with your senses and it can mess with multiple at the same time. If there's a bunch of shit going on in your head, so many thoughts circulating, like right now with Keiichi, thinking that he's in the middle of a freaking death trap, that he's the bait that Uishi-san has thrown out in order to try and solve this mystery. There's so much going on right now, 
and so much information being thrown at him and information being withheld from him that his mind is mush. It's a mess and his senses could be played with by himself. There may not have been anybody there. They, there could have and they could have just ran out. Who knows? My best guess is that he just completely imagined everything that happened there. Because I'm not believing in this curse. I don't know if there are, you know, supernatural events that will occur in this story that's to be found out later on. Right now, I think he's just losing his mind. Hey, yo, what up, mom? I intuitively, intuitively, sorry, had a bad feeling about this. It was because I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy some things. So I took the initiative. The other day we went out as a family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different things, or different kinds, actually, but they refused since the individual packages were expensive. So instead I got a whole case of the mega size pork bone and ginger flavored ones I like. But my parents don't like strong flavors, and didn't touch any of them. So the cupboards were still full of them. This was really abrupt. It was quite a distance to Tokyo from Hinamizawa. Gunning at full speed down the highway would still take about six hours, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Sorry. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highway, they likely took the train. It would have taken longer. <coughs> Honestly, there was a bunch going on that I didn't really know anything was going on there. Now that she mentioned it, I did remember that they talked about, or talked all the time about how his job prospects weren't looking so good. Part of my father's particular fragile artistic personality, his emotions change as easily as the fall sky. You could also just say he couldn't take the criticism. <coughs> As their son, there was nothing more I could say once they started talking about work. You really shouldn't. Yesterday I did bring up if I died rather abruptly, so I suppose that they were a little worried. But really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. But I didn't plan on dying. At least not while I still knew nothing. I would never allow it. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went off to Tokyo for business meetings. But Tokyo was far away. They normally did things by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance. It never happened this suddenly. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange or rather unnatural. Anyway, I only needed to recognize the reality of the situation. <coughs> yep, we're fucked. That tonight, I was the only one in the house. That when my parents came back from work, I'd be gone. Missing. Vanished. Looking back on the series of events of the previous five years involving Oyashiro Osama's curse, it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late. I didn't think it was good that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It was the same as broadcasting to my enemy or to the enemy that my parents were gone and that this was their chance. 
First, I ran to the living room, flicked on the lights, and turned the TV on to a reassuring volume. Next was the study. I similarly turned on the lights and some music. With this, from the outside, it would look like my parents were here. Once again, I went through the house, checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the veranda and the laundry still hanging out there, I went pale. That would have made it too obvious. I need to take it down. I snatched down the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Ah! The garage! They hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone up to the Okonomiya station. The garage was empty, wide open, and in plain sight. This was no good. I panicked and rushed out to the back to close the normally open garage door. It should be fine now. I needed to get the paper. Fuck the paper! Mom always got the paper since they left in the afternoon. The evening paper was still out there. You know, the fact that he's having to go through this entire process shows that, you know, he is worried. There's a lot going through his mind. He's scared out of his damn mind. And now he's having to defend himself. And I totally get it. Don't, don't think that I don't get it and that I just think that he's a loon. I'm just saying a lot of his, uh, a lot of this could just be mentality that's been going on here too. My premonition was correct. I pulled out everything from the mailbox and dropped it in the entryway. With this for sure, this time it should be fine. I feel like we're gonna get attacked here to be honest. Come to think of it, leaving the cupboard busted like that for my little freak out was kinda bad. I'll just say I tripped and fell and the bat I was holding smashed into it. Even so, just leaving it in its current state wasn't good. I should clean it up a little before mom got back and scolded me. I remember that there was a broom and dustpan in the closet. As I was going to get them, the phone rang once again. Okay, this is where I have a feeling that somebody bad is going to call us. Oh no, it's just a villager. Please just say yes. God damn it, you idiot. You I <laughs> Exactly. Don't reveal that your parents are gone. You gotta follow up still. Calm down and take care of it. That wasn't a good response either. Now they might say they'll call again or to tell her to call them when she comes back. No, we have to ask about it. The scenario I fear didn't play out, eliciting a sigh of relief. That call was fortunate in more ways than one. I'd have to deal with any telephone calls coming in from my parents tonight. I was somehow able to deal with the phone call just now, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improvis improvisation. Improvisation. Yeah, that. Improv. I needed to make up a good story to ex explain that my parents were home, but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They were making tempura and couldn't step away right now. Oh, that wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Was that going to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on the way back to my- God damn, we are just getting hella calls today. It was like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick up, but I knew I had to. They'd suspect my parents weren't here. I should have just taken the phone off the hook under the pretense that I didn't realize that it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted up the receiver. Yeah, let this be, uh, let this be Uishi-san. I stopped announcing that this was the Maibura residence. I had no reason to be kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. But unlike my uncouth voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. Oh no, I'm glad you called. Oishi-san. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed the portable handset and rushed up to my room with it. It was the same no matter where I was since there was no, no one else home, but I wanted to be in a spot that just felt a bit safer when speaking on the phone with Uushi-san. Let's make sure we're not going to get, you know, peeked on this time around. Since then, when was that exactly? There was something about the brazen way he talked that rubbed me the wrong way. The last time I spoke with Uushi-san was two days ago. 
The day I stayed home from school, I met Uoshi-san on the way back from the hospital, and we headed into town for lunch and had a talk. Then after that, Rena and Mion came to check up on me. Whenever I spoke with Uoshi-san, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. Today's phone call may well be found out by them as well. The words stopped in my throat. There was a ton of stuff that happened. All of it baffling. What should I talk about? I didn't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't ask now, I may never have another chance. This night, when my parents weren't home, I had no guarantees I would make it through the night safely after all. あの二人。レナとミオンです。そしてそこで大石さんと一緒に昼飯を食ったことを正されました。それで。お見舞い行ってことでおはぎを置いて行ったんですが、その中に針が入ってたんです。I'm actually really happy that he's telling someone about what happened, but I feel like that'll come with a risk. 偶然飲み込まずに済みましたが、これって。やっぱり脅迫でしょうかその針はえっとよく見かけるような普通の裁縫針のようでした糸お父さん穴が開いていて違いますよ前原さん針です証拠になります脅迫だと立証できるかもしれませんその針はありますか I think we threw it away, right? That's right, that's it! I dropped the receiver and rushed downstairs. When I tossed the mochi, I had overlooked it out of terror, but that needle was a valuable piece of evidence. Let's see, I threw the mochi and needle at the wall together. If it was there, then it would be on the living room wall. I'm glad that we can go to our living room wall to find evidence. But my prudent mother had cleaned that living room wall, and there was not a trace of mochi left on it. Could it be that it dropped in the gap between the wall and the carpet? I frantically searched by running my palm along the carpet, but nothing turned up. I tried moving around the sofa and desks, pulling up the carpet and then flapping it around, but I couldn't find the needle. Did my mom clean up everything without noticing it? It was just two days ago. I didn't know what day they collected the burnable trash, but it may still be in the trash bin in the kitchen. So we're going to go digging in the trash. I rushed into the kitchen, opened up the lid of the, of the pail, and poured out the contents. But even at a glance, I could tell that it would be incredibly difficult to find the needle in this pile of trash. Well, well, yeah, I mean, that's why there's something called needle in a haystack. It, it's just that difficult. I was looking for a needle in a trash stack. Yeah, there you go. I know, I'll try running my hand through it. It was a bit gross, but I was looking for a needle. If I felt a small prick, I'll be able to find it. It was a pretty tactless method, but it was the quickest. I held my breath and started striking the pile of trash with my hand. Filth flew about, there was nothing more disgusting than this, but it was not the time to be concerned about such details. I continued on for a while, but nothing turned up. I wanted to search more thoroughly, but I was still on the phone. I shouldn't keep Oishi-san waiting for too long. Later, when Mom got back, I'd have to ask her if there was a needle. I hastily began scribbling on the notepad affixed to the refrigerator with a magnet. Was there a needle? I scrawled the words with a red pen. I then dashed back up the stairs where I had been keeping Uoshi-san waiting for far too long. I hope we washed our hands. That's right. The needle wasn't the only incident. I had to tell him about this morning with the hit and run. That van was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at, at the time. Damn. At the time I just flipped out yelling at him, but I didn't look at the plate. 
What failures on my part with the needle and the plate number? I was so focused just protecting myself that I let some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow, annoyed at how worthless I was. <laughs> Ushisan started to hem and haw over the, on the other end. I can imagine him folding his arms. What Rena said on the way home today, asking why I was so much like Satoshi kun. Now I could say it with confidence that Rena knew what happened to Satoshi. She knew that there were more to it than him just simply disappearing. レナが言うには、俺はサトシとそっくりらしいんです。このまま行くと、俺もサトシと同じ運命をたどると、そんな感じのことを言うんです。運命ですか。具体的にどんな運命をたどるか言及しましたか。えっと、天候と。Ushisan let out a stern sigh and then grumbled loudly. Well, well yeah. That's obvious. I, I think even Keiichi knows that. Yeah. At that point, I started to think. Would it be prudent to sum up everything that had happened up until now as the machinations of some human perpetrator? Other than the theory of it being Rena and the others, I was left with Oyashiro-sama's curse actually existing as the only explanation. Of course, I couldn't tell that to Uoshi-san. Except, Rena's strange behavior could be proof of either scenarios. Whether it was Oyashiro-sama's curse being real, or everything being part of a conspiracy committed by all the villagers, Rena was involved. Rena had to know something. Rena was suspicious. What exactly was Rena? I couldn't help but think she was somehow involved with the prior string of mysterious deaths. I seemed to recall that Uushi-san had admitted that he had dug into Rena's past a little. He was probably just downplaying it when he said a little meaning he had actually dug pretty deep most likely. I wanted to hear about Rena. I wanted to know what happened at her previous school, among other things that were still unknown to me. If Rena was somebody I should suspect... No. Not that. What happened to the music? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I got scared. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight I was alone in this huge house. Even though I said I couldn't count on them, I had lost the security I felt I had just... I had just by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There were no other residences close to the Maibara residence. No one would be able to hear anything no matter how loud it was. I had never felt as much resentment towards my father's artistic temperament than the fact that he had this house built in such a remote location as I did right now. Oh, no. No, let's not go get the doorbell. Let's not. Let's just ignore it. I wondered if I would still be here by tomorrow morning. So I had to ask. Right now. Because I had no idea when the next chance would come. I like how we're just flat out, like, ignoring that shit. Even though he was so far away on the other end of the line, this was the most reliable he had ever been, or had ever felt. I wanted to ask about Rena. About what happened at her previous school. Uh-oh. Why are we getting cut off there? Why are we getting cut off? Okay, well. I noticed a sound that had been going on for a while now. Since I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to it at first, but I finally realized it was the doorbell. The time was 7 o'clock. It was past the time the postman would 
would be making a delivery and past any sensible time for a neighbor to be visiting. I considered just acting like nobody was home, but that wouldn't be good. That would ruin all the work I put in making it look like my parents were home. I needed to answer the door. I don't like this idea. That would be a problem. I dropped the handset on my bed and dashed down to the door. I needed to make up a good excuse to get them to leave. I had a hunch it was the lady who called right, at, right before Ushisan did. In which case, it would be one of the neighbors who's friends with my mom. I'll just say mom isn't feeling well and went to bed early. And that would be the easiest option. I have a really disgustingly bad feeling about what's about to happen here. It'd be hard for her to ask me to wake my mom up if she's not feeling well. The bell continued to ring at regular intervals. Luckily, there's a peephole. If someone didn't answer after you rang the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, wouldn't you? Without removing the chain, I opened the door slightly and peered out the peered out at the visitor. A chill ran down my spine. Oh boy, I can't I can't wait until we see who it is. I knew it. Somewhere deep inside, I had prepared for this moment. I had tried to escape by imagining it or imagining it was the easiest person to deal with, one of my mom's friends. But it's Rena. It's got to be Rena. Come on, show us, show us a Rena. Yep, there she is. Rena. <laughs> There shouldn't be any reason for Rena to come out to come over at this hour. The timing also made me feel uneasy, because it was just as I was about to ask Uushi-san about Rena. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence, but those unsettling words from Mion several days ago echoed back to me. さてね。おじさんにわからないことはないからね。It seems that Mion wasn't with her, but that didn't change the situation at all. I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. No, no. It was true that speaking through a chain door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate, but... Uh, what do you mean by that? Rena looked at the ground sadly, but she kept smiling at least, and her efforts to keep that smile up was quite pitiful. Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. What I really feared, more than the possibility that hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain, was trusting Rena enough to remove the chain and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain wasn't unlatched, even if it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by Rena. Since it didn't seem like I'd remove the chain from her silent urging, she appeared to give up on trying to get into the entranceway. Which is good. Well, I don't really think we did. But I guess we'll answer her question in the next episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I'm a little spooked. I was a little spooked, you know, as Keiichi was alone at home. And uh, I'm still kind of spooked. But not, not as much as I was in other episodes. But I feel like things... Things are gonna get a little uh, not good in the next episode. I, just, just a, just a bad feeling I have there. So tune in for that one. We'll see what happens there. Thank you all for watching this episode. Excuse me. Ah, damn, sorry. Sometimes I just can't speak. Uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I guess we'll see what, <laughs> what decides to happen in the next one. God damn. Recording so much of this all at once is really just destroying my soul. Whatever bit of soul I have, it's just, it's, it's breaking me down, man. But I hope it's all very entertaining for you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one. Take it easy.